Hi, and welcome to this course, Estimating Measurement Uncertainty. I'm Henrik Nielsen, and I'll be teaching this course. Um, uh, by way of introduction, I am originally from Denmark. I have an MSc and a PhD in Mechanical Engineering that I got both of them from the Technical University of Denmark. Uh, early in my career, I was a technical manager of corporate standards for a major engine manufacturer. Uh, I have been a freelance assessor for A2LA, the American Association for Laboratory Accreditation, one of the largest accreditation bodies in the world, where I have assessed calibration laboratories, and with that, the uncertainty budgets they presented for their calibrations. I am operating a proficiency testing service where also I evaluate uncertainties of the laboratories that participate in the testing and the testing helps them uh, prove that they can actually measure to the level of uncertainty that they claim. So really all my career has been about measurement and, and measurement uncertainty. So what are we going to cover in, in this course? Well. In the first section, we're going to talk about the concept of uncertainty. Well, what is this uncertainty thing? And, and, and how does it relate to the error in the measurement? And, and um, how do we express uncertainty? And sort of the very high sort of fluffy cloud kind of level of, of what, what really is it that we're talking about when we talk about uncertainty? Then once we talked about the concept in section two, we're going to talk about how do we identify the contributors to the uncertainty? How, how do we come up with a list of things that make our measuring process uncertain? And, and it's been my experience that this is really the most difficult part of it all. Um, and it's also the most important part because really, if you can't properly identify, I usually say, the, the, the top three uncertainty contributors, then your uncertainty budget is not going to have any relationship to the, the real uncertainty of, of your measurement. But if you can successfully identify those top three contributors, then your budget is really as good as it's going to get due to the way that uncertainty contributors are added together. So really the most important part is to come up with the correct list of contributors. And so we're first going to talk about how can we search for these factors that influence our measurement and how can we do it in a systematic way that gives us a good probability of, of really finding those major contributors. Then in the third section, we're going to talk about the mathematical model of the measurement. and and, and what that means is how we connect these influence factors to, to, the, to the, what we call the measure and the, 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 the quantity we're measuring. And so say you have a dimensional measurement and you know that temperature influences the, the, the measurement. Well, how do we get from degrees centigrade to millimeters? That is what we, we use the mathematical model for, to, to, to quantify how much a degree turns into in millimeters. So that defines how things are linked together. Now, there isn't just one model of each measurement. For each measurement, there are different ways it can be modeled. And um, what we want to do is, is come up with a way of modeling the measurement that makes the uncertainty estimation as simple as possible. And that has the, the, the nice other benefit that the same model that is the most simple is also the one that's the most useful when it comes to trying to improve the measuring process and, and maybe reduce the uncertainty or, or maybe make the measurement easier to make or require less complicated equipment, etc., etc. So it's sort of a a double advantage there. And we're going to talk about, well, what does the uncertainty tell us? Then in section four, we're going to talk about what we call the GUM method. And GUM is short for the guide to the expression of uncertainty in measurement. Uh, 
And as you can see, I put up uh, a URL there, and that is actually where you can download the, the, the guide for free. It is from an organization called BIPM, which is the International Bureau of Weights and Measures. And uh, before you tell me that, well, that doesn't spell BIPM, well, it does in French, and it's an international organization located outside Paris, and so the name is in French. The guide is in English, though. Um, if you do look in, in, the, in the guide, it was first issued in 1993. The current version is from 2008. It hasn't changed much. The, the fundamental method is, is very generic, and so there has not been much change there. But if you look at it, you'll see there's a lot of, of sometimes very complicated math in there. And so it might raise the question, is it something I should be afraid of? Is it really as complicated as it seems? And I would say that, well, the, the gum is written to be sort of correct to the nth degree, if you will. So it, it's, it has to be statistically rigorous and it has to be correct in, in all cases where, where it's being applied. But if we back off from that rigor just a little bit and, and um, try to, to, to maybe simplify things in, 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 in ways that that really don't make much change when it comes to the final result of the uncertainty budget, the final uncertainty value, then we can simplify that math quite considerably. And, and so we can, we can make it so that it's not as complicated as it may seem if you just look in, in the gum itself. On the other hand, we could ask, well, is this something we should be happy about? Well, I have been traveling and teaching this class for 15 years and met a lot of interesting people, so I'm happy about it. But seriously, folks, um, what I think it does, it, it, it allows you to make better measurements. It, not just measurements that are less uncertain, but also measurements that are less complicated and less expensive while still retaining the level of uncertainty that, that you may need. And, and, and that's the real powerful part about uncertainty estimation. That's why I think we should all be happy about it. In section five, we're going to talk about uncertainty budgeting and how we combine the factors that influence our measurement into that entire budget. And, and how do we use the uncertainty calculation as a budget? And, you know, budgets help us plan and steer in the right direction. We use that, do that with a with a money budget or a business budget. And likewise here, we, we, we use the uncertainty budget to help us adjust our measurement and our measuring process and, and, and making sure that we don't do things that are not really necessary to keep the measurement in, in the uncertainty range we want. And on the other hand, that we actually do the things that are important to, to keep the measurement as good as we need it to be. And then we're going to talk about what is it the uncertainty budget tells us, what, what, what is it, what is it we, we, we quantify when we quantify the uncertainty. Finally, in section six, we're going to talk about what we call the Puma method. And no, it's not a big cat. And no, it's not athletic footwear. Uh, Puma stands for the Procedure for Uncertainty Management. And it's really a way of making uncertainty budgeting a more fluid and iterative process, where instead of trying to find the, the exact uncertainty, if you will, which I know sounds kind of oxymoronic, the idea in the Puma method is that to prove that the measuring process is adequate for our purpose with minimum effort. And the idea is that there are many measuring processes where maybe we're checking parts against the torrents, and as long as the uncertainty is a certain percentage of the torrents or less, then we're happy. And so we don't really care what the exact uncertainty is as long as the uncertainty is less than that target value. And if we take that approach, then uncertainty estimation actually becomes quite a bit easier. So that's what we're going to do there in section six. And that's the end of it. And so when you've gone through this course, you, you should have learned to identify and quantify uncertainty contributors and do that in a systematic way 
that helps you find those big three uncertainty contributors that you need to find to get an uncertainty budget that is as correct as as it needs to be and and as 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 close as as it it will mathematically become you will learn how to combine the uncertainty contributors to calculate the overall uncertainty of the measurement and then we're going to talk about using the uncertainty budget to optimize the measuring process itself, the measurement instrumentation, that is, what equipment are we using, and what I call the traceability trail, which is what is it we're calibrating about the equipment, what tolerances do we calibrate it to, and how often do we calibrate it. So that is what you should expect to get out of the course on estimating measurement uncertainty. Thank you.